The Simpsons is both the longest running American animated program and sitcom. The show has hit a massive 25 seasons with the 26th announced for September. It's been a long time since its debut in 1989, but only two years later, The Simpsons began their video game career. The family have had a large amount of video games under the name, we're talking over 26 releases. People remember games like Hit and Run, The Simpsons Game, and current iOS and Android title Tapped Out. But from 91 to the start of 92, a massive five games were released. So we're gonna check out the games and find out just how bad they really are. Nineteen ninety one was a big year for video games that created some of the biggest names and mascots in the video game industry. The grandfather of fighting games Street Fighter 2 arrived in arcades, Sega unleashed the much hyped Sonic the Hedgehog for their consoles, and Nintendo released both Super Mario World and A Link to the Past. All of these are highly praised iconic titles that are still played to this day. Also released that year were four Simpson titles. They are uh, yeah. First on the list is The Simpsons Arcade Game, a four-player beat-em-up that hit arcades worldwide and later found a limited re-release on XBL and PSN 21 years later. The story is surprisingly dark, Smithers turns child abductor during a jewelry store robbery and The Simpsons have to fight their way through Springfield, through most tavern and graveyards in an attempt to get Maggie back. So the story's a little bit odd, but the game isn't really the focus of the video. It's fairly normal aside from Smithers turning into a child abductor. The gameplay and graphics are fairly decent in both early version and the 2012 re-release. The other four games in this video are where things start to get weird and incredibly difficult. Bart vs. the Space Mutants was definitely both of those things. Featuring a large multi-console release, it was a pretty popular title. It's a game about aliens attempting to take over the world. Wow, sounds cool, right? No. The aliens have invaded the Earth disguised as humans, and they're building a weapon to take over the world. What do they need? Purple things. Really? They also need hats and balloons. We can only tremble in fear of what terrible weapon they could be building. Bart Simpson is the only person in the world who knows about the impending invasion thanks to his new x-ray glasses, which would be understandable if it wasn't for the clearly visible aliens dotted around. So Bart is the last hope for the world against the invading aliens, but what could possibly stop them? Spray paint purple objects. Oh boy. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. And this is it. Avoid aliens, spray paint purple objects, and use your x-ray glasses to work out which people are aliens and jump on them. But this game is surprisingly difficult. I had this game as a kid and I could never get past the first level. You're given two lives and the game is built as an obstacle course. Your mission in the first level is to spray purple objects red, but it's not always that simple. You need to spray at the right angle or you'll waste your paint, and with limited cans, this can get annoying. Buy tools with coins and use them in the right area. Use a wrench to wash wet paint off with a hydrant. Jump on the grass next to a keep off sign and yep, you were meant to spray paint that guy. Or there's the completely random use a coin on a phone box next to Moe's tavern so you can prank call Mo. he can run out and then you can spray paint his apron and his hair apparently. There is no way of knowing this without finding a walkthrough. Yeah okay, a bee came out and killed me. A sign you can't reach, you're meant to fire a rocket at it so it mysteriously turns red. This game is infuriating even when you know what to do. The slightest mistake and you're dead. Eat my shorts, man. I can't do this anymore. You can imagine the second level for yourself. Who made this anyway? No. It all makes sense now. What company would make spray painting the main goal in a video game and then make it incredibly difficult to do? It's brought to you by the creative minds that gave you Desert Bus. The worst game never released. The monsters. But that's not all. Imagineering are also responsible for the final two games in this video. Just how bad are these games gonna get? The next game can only get better, right? Something a little easier? Dear God, no. Welcome to Bart's House of Weirdness on DOS. Yep, that's my face going into it too. Developed by Distinctive Software and released on New Year's Day in 1992, it later found its way into edition 179 of Dragon Magazine, a 
Dungeons & Dragons magazine where it gave it 5 stars. The reviewer said, Without a doubt, Bart's House of Weirdness is one of the best arcade games we've ever played. It also happens to be one Konami's best products, and you not only get to participate in Bart's favorite TV show, but you also get to help Maggie find her ball. I, uh, can't wait to find Maggie's ball. The game begins with Bart being grounded by his parents, and that's it. And the Writers Guild Award goes to... Anyone else. Under the watchful gaze of one seriously creepy crusty doll, we begin in Bart's room. We have the choice of three exits, his bedroom door, the open window, or into the closet. Each of these lead to a choice of two levels. On the back cover, it tells you to punch the sideshow Bob Egg. Oh, thanks, game developers? If you punch the egg too much, it actually kills you, which sums up the game. Before you've even had a chance to try a level, you can die in a room without any enemies. In the attic, we're instantly attacked by wasps and the audio is terrible. This is the beginning of torture. The wasps don't do enough damage to kill you, but stop you from doing anything in the level. You're armed with a laser gun and slingshot, but these wasps are near impossible to hit. There's an intricate jumping puzzle, and the wasps are just there to make you weep. And there's a creepy mirror. That's a creepy mirror. Even if you kill a wasp before you can actually get anywhere in the level, he responds to take his revenge. Down the opposite stairs, you jump over green rats, evil soap suds, and get stuck on fucking paint cans. There's a man down here with a rope for reasons I don't know and purple gerbils throwing jam jars at you. Even the water in this game hurts you. The last game was difficult, but this would make grown men weep. Surely the other levels can't be as bad. Outside the window, we finally get to experience the infamous Maggie's Ball level. The torture of the first two levels will pay off. We'll finally have a chance to find out what amazed the reviewers. Fuck off, it's always fucking bees. You're meant to travel through the trees and into the sewers, but I can't even swing over a gap. A second attempt doesn't get me far. Maggie's Ball can go to hell. My failure didn't stop there. Get hit, get hit, die. Get hit, get hit, die. The itchy and scratchy level looks surprisingly good, but despite having everything going on all over the screen, it doesn't let first-time players stand there and try and work out the pattern. Just when I think I'm making progress, the game physically comes out and slaps me in the face. Okay, no. We're going back to the Game Boy. It's time for Escape from Camp Deadly, a side-scrolling platformer featuring Bard and Lisa. In the opening, we're introduced to Iron Fist Burns, a nephew of Burns with a name worthy of a gangster rapper. Bart and Lisa are stuck in the infamous Camp Deadly for two months and need to escape. On the back of the box, it shows what I can only imagine is Bart standing over one of his victims after losing his mind and going for revenge. And wow, Bart looks stoned. So it's your standard game of capture the flag, but with Bart versus everyone else in the camp, we grab the flag and charge on. Lisa? Lisa is also stoned, apparently. She's just gazing at the boomerang in her hand as if it's the most beautiful thing she's ever seen. Unfortunately, shortly after starting playing this game, it decided to break, and uh... That was it. That was the end of the game.
Homer Simpson, a cultural icon who appeared on the front of Time magazine. In 1990, Bart Mania was unleashed and millions of Bart-related t-shirts were sold, with as many as a million sold per day. He quickly became one of the most popular characters on television. He even had a song written by Michael Jackson on the Simpsons Sing the Blues album. So it was big news when it was announced that Bart was back with a new game and started appearing in several magazines building up to release. With Bart vs. the Space Mutant still fresh and staying in the top 10 games in Nintendo Power, Bart vs. the World found its way to release and Bart Mania lived on. Like its predecessor made by the same company, Imagineering, the game got a multi-console release. The intro screen opens with a pink Bart spinning around the globe. The poor guy looks like he's crippled with social anxieties. The story begins with a Springfield art contest and the winner gets a worldwide crusty treasure hunt. This is all apparently televised and the entire time we got a goofy sideshow Mel playing the flute. I get it, everyone is goofy in this game. Bart Simpson ends up winning the contest with this drawing, but plot twist, it was a plan by Mr. Burns and Goofy Smithers to murder the Simpsons to protect their profits. Apparently Burns' family located all around the world and his Chinese cousin Fu Manchu Burns and other family will try to take out Bart. Each continent has a series of challenges. In China there's a trivia section, a sliding puzzle and your standard memory card game with limited turns. In case some of you are wondering, none of these are fun. The main levels has Bart exploring a junk ship or skateboarding along the Great Wall. With dragons obviously. The entire point of this game is to collect crusty merchandise but it doesn't tell you what you're supposed to be collecting. Levels are dotted around with all kinds of power-ups and items, but what are you actually meant to collect? If you rush through, beat the bosses and reach the end, Krusty will introduce you on his show. A hero's welcome, right? And that's it. It just cuts you off and you're back to the opening credits. Oh... Boy. If collecting items is such an important part of this game, then shouldn't have cared slightly more before the end of the game? But they don't want you to collect crusty heads to reach the end, despite having them as rewards throughout the game. They want unique crusty items. Remember that one time you fell off the side of a ship and found Maggie and a random boat crashed into you? That wasn't destroyed, silly. You collected it. On the Great Wall of China, you need to touch Lisa and collect a crusty statue along the way. But if you don't touch Lisa, then obviously you can't pick it up. It's easy to pick holes in games released over 20 years ago, but most of these failed to take anything from the actual series, and ended up just placing Bart and family in different scenarios. The Simpsons arcade game managed to take actual characters from the series, place attention to detail to the surroundings, and though it's not perfect by a long shot, it put a lot of creativity into it. Both the main Imagineering titles lacked any of that while throwing awful controls and banal tasks into the gameplay. My favourite part from all the games though, this.